So in today's class, let us discuss about AC distributors with concentrated loads. And we have considered the power factors of the loads referred to receiving end voltage. Okay, so the receiving end voltage is taken as a reference. And with respect to the receiving end reference, we are considering the power factor of the load. So let us consider an AC distributor, say A, C. Okay, so let us consider two concentrated loads tapped from point B and point C respectively. So let I1 be the current at point, load current at point B and let I2 be the load current at point C. Okay, so let the load power factors at point B be cos phi 1 and let the power factor of the load at point C be cos phi 2. Okay, so this cos phi 1 and phi 1 and phi 2 are taken with respect to the reference vector which is the receiving end voltage Vr. Receiving end side is point C, sending end side is point A. Okay, so the receiving end voltage at point C is Vr. Okay, and usually the loads will be lagging. Uh, that are RL loads. Okay, so we have considered cos phi 1 and cos phi 2 as lagging power factor. So since uh, there are two load concentrated loads, I1 and I2 at B and C, we divide this uh, distributor into two sections, A and B, then section BC, section AB, section BC. So let R1 and X1 be the resistance and reactance of section AB. So let R2 and X2 be the resistances and reactance of section BC okay so in section BC in section BC the current load current I2 flows okay so in section AB the current I1 plus I2 flows so in section AB the current will be I1 plus I2 which is nothing but the sending and current IS okay so what is the sending and current Is. What is the sending end voltage? V at point A. What is the receiving end voltage? V at point C. What is the receiving end current? I2. Okay. So now our aim is to calculate the voltage at the sending end. The sending end voltage has to be calculated. So what is the sending end voltage? It will be the receiving end voltage at point C plus the voltage drop across section BC plus the voltage drop across AB. Okay. So what is the sending end voltage or the voltage at point A? It is the voltage at point C. That is the receiving end voltage plus the voltage drop in BC plus the voltage drop in AB. Okay. So we know the current as well as the impedance in BC as well as AB section. So knowing the current and impedance in these two sections, we can calculate the voltage drops. Okay, so now we are looking how to find out the sending end voltage. See, the impedance of section AB is taken as ZAB, which is R1 plus JX1. In the same way, impedance of section BC. ZBC is equal to R2 plus JX2. Already we have defined what is R2, what is X2, what is R1, what is X1. Okay. So now the load current at point B. Remember this is an AC system. So we have to consider both the magnitude as well as the phase angle. Okay. So load current at point B. I1 is equal to magnitude of I1. This is a vector or a phasor. Is equal to magnitude of I1 into E power minus J phi 1. Okay, so this is, now we have to represent the, represent any vector in complex, uh, co exponential complex form. Okay, so I1 E power minus J phi 1. In terms of cos and sine, because we have the power factor which is nothing but cos phi. Okay, so in terms of uh, cos and sine, we can write it as I1 into cos phi 1 minus J sine phi 1. So why we have written it as minus J phi 1? Because it is lagging power factor. Okay. So because it is written as minus due to lagging power factor, here also we will get minus. So I1 cos phi 1 minus J I1 sin phi 1. In the same way, load current at point C is I2 is equal to 
magnitude of i2 into e to the power minus j phi 2. Again this minus because of lagging power factor cos phi 2. On expanding we will get i2 into cos phi 2 minus j sin phi 2. Okay. So now we know the current in section AB. The current in section AB is I1 plus I2 which is nothing but the sending a current. Current in section AB is I1 plus I2. So voltage drop in section AB is VAB is equal to I1 plus I2 into current into impedance. So substitute I1 plus I2. We have I1 and I2. Okay. Into ZAB also we know R1 plus JX1. Similarly, the voltage drop in section BC is the VBC, the current in section BC which is I2 into ZBC, substitute for I2 from this equation and substitute for ZBC from this equation. Okay. So, yeah, this step already we have written. I1 plus I2 is nothing but the sending and current. Okay. So, now the sending and voltage, the sending and voltage Vs is equal to, as I told already, Vr okay that is the voltage at the receiving point vc or vr plus drop in bc plus drop in ab okay so drop in bc is i2 into zbc drop in ab is i1 plus i2 into zab okay so if we want you can substitute also whatever we have calculated uh, derived earlier so sending and power factor is taken as cos phi s okay so the sending and power factor is taken as cos phi s so for this uh, uh, this, this AC distributor we can draw the phasor diagram as shown here ok so now I will explain you the phasor diagram so in a, I have told you that we are calculating the sending and voltage by considering receiving and voltage as the reference ok so this purple line VR which is nothing but the voltage at point C is taken as the reference. It is it's drawn as the reference. VR is equal to VC is the receiving and voltage taken as the reference. Okay. Now with respect to VR. Okay. We have we have drawn I2. We have drawn I2. What is I2? The load current at the receiving point C I2. What is the phase angle of I2 with respect to Vr? It is phi 2. Okay. So look on to this definition. We have taken the load power factor at point B and C B cos phi 1 and cos phi 2. Point C is the receiving end point cos phi 2. So what is that phi 2? It is the phase angle between receiving and voltage and receiving and current. What is receiving and voltage at point C? Vr. What is the receiving and current? I2. Okay. So, since it is lagging power factor, we have drawn I2 behind Vr by an angle phi 2. Okay, so you note down the sequence Vr to be drawn first followed by I2. So, I2 lags the receiving and voltage Vr by phi 2. Understood? So, first vector to be drawn is Vr, then you have to draw I2. Okay, so now once Vr and I2 are drawn, what is I2 into R2? So, in section BC, the resistance is R2, reactance is X2. So, you know that the current through a pure resistor will be in phase with the voltage. Across the resistance, voltage and current will be in phase. Okay. So, if you take only this R2, what is the voltage across R2? I2 into R2. So, R, I2 into R2 will be in phase with I2. So, that's how I have drawn this green phasor, green line, I2, R2 in phase with I2. Okay. So, this I2 into R2, which is a voltage across R2, is drawn parallel to I2. So, this also should be very careful. Okay. After I2, draw I2, R2. Okay. So, now, I2 into X2 is the voltage across the reactance of this section. I2 into X2. And only if you take X2, it is a pure reactance. So, pure inductive reactance, the voltage will be ahead of the current by 90 degree. So, that is the reason why we are drawing I2 X2 ahead by exactly 90 degrees. Okay. So, this I2 X2 will be 90 degrees. It should be drawn 90 degrees with respect to I2. Okay. Now, I2 into R2 plus JX2. 
because of this 90 degree it is I2 into R2 plus J X2. What is that? I2 into R2 plus J X2. It is nothing but the voltage across section BC. Okay, what we have written earlier. So, I2 into R2 plus J X2 is nothing but VBC. So, I2 into R2 plus J X2 is VBC. Okay, so now we have completed the section BC. Now we have completed section BC. Now come for current I1. Okay. So now what is current I1? It is the load current at point B. Okay. So I1. What is the phase angle of I1? Phi 1 with respect to Vr. That is the initial assumption taken. Power factors are referred to receiving and voltage. That means I1 lacks the Receiving and voltage Vr by phi 1. So now using this blue phase R I have drawn I1. I have drawn I1 with respect to Vr. Actually this is Vr. Okay this is Vr. This is phi 1. Okay do this correction. So I1 is drawn at an angle phi 1 behind Vr. Okay. So now, what is IS? What is IS? IS is nothing but I1 plus I2. So now we are going to take the vector sum of I1 and I2. Okay. So we have I1, we have I2. So draw the parallelogram. With respect to I1 and I2, draw the parallelogram. Draw the diagonal of the, connect the diagonals of the parallelogram which is nothing but IS. So what is IS? IS is the vector sum of I1 at I2. Okay, so now what is IS? It is the sending and current or the current through section AB. Now, what is the drop across the resistance R1 of section AB? It is IS into R1. IS into R1. See, this red phase R. IS into R1 should be drawn in parallel with IS. Okay, so what is IS R1? Voltage across resistance drawn in parallel with IS. Okay, then coming to IS into X1. What is IS into X1? It is the drop across the reactance of section AB which is 90 degree ahead. So this IS X1 should be drawn by 90 degrees. Okay, so now what is IS into R1 plus JX1? Take the vector sum of this both vectors. Is into R1 plus Jx1 is nothing but the voltage across section AB. Okay. So V AB. Okay. So now what is what is VA? What is VA? It is the sending and voltage. Vs or VA is nothing but receiving and voltage plus VBC plus VAB. See we, ha we have VR as the reference. We have VBC, this green dotted vector and this red dotted vector is VAB. So VR plus VBC plus VAB is nothing but the sending and voltage VS. Okay, that is nothing but the sending and voltage VS. Okay, and if you want the voltage drop at point B, if you want the voltage drop at point B, what is it? It is the receiving and voltage plus VBC, drop across VBC. Okay. So, this green summation vector, Vb is nothing but Vr plus Vbc. Okay. So, this you should, you should arrive at this. Vs or Va is equal to Vr plus Vbc plus Vab in accordance to this equation for sending and voltage.